Hi, and welcome to Really Understanding Incur Terms 2020, a series of comprehensive masterclasses. I'm Bob Ronai, and this is lesson number 12, continuing with DPU. But first, of course, the disclaimers. I'm not a lawyer. The contents of this course are not legal advice. I was a member of the International Chamber of Commerce's Inco Terms 2020 Drafting Group, which created these rules. Some of the contents are direct quotes from the Inco Terms 2020 publication, number 723E of the ICC. My explanations, my comments and my opinions are based on my knowledge and my experience of over five decades. My intent in creating this comprehensive course on Inco Terms 2020 is to ensure that my knowledge and my experience is passed on to you for a better future for you in trade. In the next two lessons, we will continue to look at DPU, A2 and B2 delivery and taking delivery with its two options and problems for air, rail, road, bulk and brake bulk. Then we'll look at A6 and B6, delivery and transport document, A9 and B9, allocation of costs, and A10, B10 notices and letters of credit. As always, I will explain what the book says first, which is where other trainers and YouTube videos usually stop. But then I will examine the many issues arising from these articles as we go along. First, going back to what the book says, A2 delivery, the seller must unload the goods from the arriving means of transport and must then deliver them by placing them at the disposal of the buyer at the agreed point, if any, at the named place of destination or by procuring the goods so delivered. In either case, the seller must deliver the goods on the agreed date or within the agreed period. A2 Delivery, Air Freight, DPU Airport Terminal. The contract of sale should be very clear that from the moment the goods are unloaded, meaning delivered as an A2, into the air carrier's terminal, all further terminal handling charges and storage are for the buyer because they occur after delivery. Of course, the buyer must arrange all import formalities and the buyer will contract for the goods to be taken from the air terminal to its premises at its own cost. Air Freight DPU Buyer's Premises The contract of sale should be very clear that from the moment the goods arrive into the airline's terminal, all terminal charges and storage beyond the free time are for the buyer if the buyer has, for any reason, a delay or fails in their import formalities. The buyer, of course, must arrange all import formalities. The seller must contract at its own cost for the packages of goods to then be taken from the airline's terminal to the buyer's premises for the seller's carrier to unload from the delivering vehicle. The contract of sale should be clear that the buyer will allow the seller a specific number of hours to unload the truck and any truck delay charges beyond that time are to be reimbursed to the seller. Now the seller should be aware that if the buyer fails to accept delivery of the goods then the airline will charge all storage to the seller. In case of the buyer defaulting Trying to then return the goods or send them on to another country might be impossible due to the export rules in the buyer's country. The seller needs to be aware of many potential problems in carrying out its obligation to deliver unloaded into the buyer's premises. The seller must arrange for its carrier to unload the goods from the truck. That means it must provide the machinery, maybe a forklift or crane, and labour to do so. The buyer may want to know who these people are, their criminal history, their work permits, their visas, etc., and may require them to do a site induction. 
the buyer may require from the seller or its carrier evidence of suitable insurances such as accident, public liability, workers' compensation, etc., plus confidentiality and non-disclosure agreement. A further complication is the coordination of the logistics at destination. One, the seller's forwarder arranges carriage from origin into the destination air terminal. Two, the buyer must arrange import formalities, usually via a customs broker or separately via the seller's forwarder at the buyer's risk and cost. Three, the customs broker must know the identity of the seller's forwarder, of course, or their local agent or its trucking company. Four, the customs broker then hands any necessary goods release documents to that local Ford or agent or trucking company to obtain the goods from the air terminal. Five, the Ford or local agent trucking company then contracts at the seller's risk and cost for trucking of the goods from the air terminal to the buyer's premises. Six, the seller's carrier unloads the goods from that truck and seven, any truck delay charge will be billed by the carrier to the seller. A2 Delivery Rail, DPU Destination Terminal or Station. Of course, the buyer must arrange all import formalities. The contract of sale should be very clear that from the moment the rail car is unloaded in the rail terminal, that means delivery under A2, all terminal handling charges and storage are for the buyer and the buyer will contract for the goods to be taken from the rail terminal to its premises at its own cost. Rail DPU Buyer's Premises The buyer must arrange all import formalities again. The contract of sale should be very clear here that from the moment the goods arrive into the rail terminal, all terminal charges and storage beyond any free time, are for the buyer. The seller must contract at its own cost for the packages of goods to then be taken from the rail terminal to the buyer's premises for the seller to unload from the delivering vehicle. If the buyer has its own rail siding, of course, then the seller can contract for delivery there but must be able to unload the rail car. The contract of sale Yet again, should be clear that the buyer has a specific number of hours to unload the truck. Any truck delay charges beyond that time are to be reimbursed to the seller. The seller should be aware, again, that if the buyer fails to accept delivery of the goods, then the carrier will charge all storage to the seller. In case of the buyer defaulting, trying to then return the goods or send them on to another country might be impossible due to the export rules in the buyer's country. The seller needs to be aware of many potential problems in carrying out its obligation to deliver unloaded into the buyer's premises. The seller must arrange for its carrier to unload the goods from the truck or rail car. That means it must provide the machinery, maybe a forklift or crane and labour to do so and the buyer may want to know again who those people are, their criminal history, their work permits, their visas, etc., and may require them to do a site induction. The buyer may require from the seller or its carrier evidence of suitable insurances such as accident, public liability, workers' compensation, etc., plus confidentiality and a non-disclosure agreement. A further complication is the coordination of the logistics at destination. One, the seller's forwarder arranges for carriage from origin into the rail terminal and unloading from the rail car. Two, the buyer must arrange import formalities, usually via a customs broker or separately via the seller's forwarder but at the buyer's risk and cost. And three, the customs broker must know the identity of the seller's forwarder or their local agent or its trucking company. Four, the customs broker then hands any necessary release documents for the goods to that local forwarder, agent or trucking company, to ad- obtain the goods from the rail terminal. Five, the forwarder or local agent or trucking company then contracts at the seller's risk and cost for trucking of the goods from the rail terminal 
to the buyer's premises. The seller's carrier unloads the goods from that truck or rail car and any truck delay charge will be billed by the carrier to the seller. Let's look at road DPU buyer's premises. The buyer must arrange all import formalities again. The seller must contract at its own cost for the packages of goods to be taken from its premises to the buyer's premises for the seller's carrier to unload from the delivering vehicle. The contract of sale should be clear that the buyer will allow the seller a specific number of hours to unload the truck and any truck delay charges beyond that time are to be reimbursed to the seller. Once again, the seller should be aware that if the buyer fails to accept delivery, the carrier will charge all storage to the seller. In case of buyer defaulting again, trying to then return the goods or send them to another country might be impossible due to the export rules in the buyer's country. Once again, the seller needs to be aware of many potential problems in carrying out its obligation to deliver unloaded into the buyer's premises. The seller must arrange for its carrier to unload the goods from the truck. That means it must somehow provide the machinery, maybe a forklift or crane, and labour to do so. The buyer may want to know who those people are, of course, the criminal history, work permits, visas, etc., and may require them to do a site induction. The buyer may require from the seller or its carrier evidence of suitable insurances, such as accident, public liability, workers' compensation, etc., plus confidentiality and non-disclosure agreement. C. Bulk and Break Bulk DPU Destination Port While this is not usually an envisaged mode of transport for DPU, there's no reason why it can't be. However, it would involve the seller including in its contract of carriage for unloading the vessel, which is, after all, the arriving means of transport, using typically the vessel's own unloading equipment such as cranes, grabs or pumps or infrastructure on the port if necessary. B2, delivery. Very simple, uncomplicated, but we've covered everything. The buyer must take delivery of the, of the goods when they have been delivered under A2. In the next lesson, our third about DPU, I'll explain A6 and B6 delivery and transport document, A9 and B9 allocation of costs and A10, B10 notices and letters of credit. If you like this lesson, please click on the thumbs up button below. If you'd like to be alerted to each new lesson, please hit the subscribe button and the bell. And please feel free to leave any comments and questions relevant to this lesson below. Till next lesson.